Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day. Uh, let's begin this session with a word of prayer. Uh, can any one of us please lead us in prayer? Simran, can you lead us in prayer? Can I pray then? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Kennedy. Our Heavenly Father Jehovah, we thank you for this day that you've given unto us as a class. Father Jehovah, I commit our teacher, Pastor Emmanuel, all into your hands. You have us to be asked to lead us in learning of Father Jehovah. Father, I pray for the spirit of revelation to come in us, Father, because we are learning deeper truth about your truth about your word. Father Jehovah, I commit all the students, Father Jehovah, who are those even those of who do not join Father Jehovah. We will ask them their faith, Father, they join us that we can learn together, Father Jehovah. And Father, the only God who is what we worship and to receive, Father Jehovah. I commit everything that we are going to learn into your hand. In the mighty name of our Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kennedy. Uh, uh, all right. Let's let's just do a quick review of what we did yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we went into chapter 3. Uh, we looked at points from chapter 3, right workplace attitudes. So we saw that attitude is a choice. And our in most cases, our attitude will determine our altitude in life, meaning uh, uh, how high we reach. Uh, Kennedy, I'll just mute you. Okay. And then do all for the glory of God. Keep our ambition kingdom focused, which means, you know, we looked at that verse, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added unto us. And so even in the workplace, in the corporate sector, uh, our ambition our focus is not only to go up the ladder, but is also to reveal uh, God's glory wherever we are, to build God's kingdom, uh, uh, even in the workplace. A uh, very important point we looked at was, uh, you know, money is not everything in life. Money is, some, is a resource that God has given us. And so God is our master. Money is our slave. And, and we are to serve God. And the Lord will provide for us. And we also look at how money can be a factor to, you know, uh, to fail in the plan that God has for us. Right? Sometimes we, we may you know, run out of money and forget what God has called us to do. So uh, we should be careful. How do we do that? Always walk in the fear of the Lord. Uh, we talked about how the fear of the Lord is reverence and honor to God to do even the smallest thing that has been assigned to us, to do it with integrity, to do it with honor, knowing that God is watching us, right? Uh, and then finally, we looked at the fruit of the Spirit, how God has given us the Holy Spirit, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit is available, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, uh, gentleness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. So God has given us the, the fruit through the Holy Spirit. And so even in the workplace, even in ministry, uh, we are to exhibit these attributes uh, in our work. And when we do that, uh, you know, we will be pleasing, not only in the sight of our team and our managers, our leaders, uh, but we will also be pleasing in the sight of God. Right? So we'll go to the next point. I'm on page 36. Uh, do your work obediently, sincerely, will, willingly, and cheerfully. Let's read Ephesians chapter 6, 5 to 8. Yes, any one of us can read Ephesians 6, 5 to 8. Sound great? Go ahead. Slaves. Obey your human master with fear and trembling, and do it with a sincere heart, as though you, you were serving Christ. Do this not only when they are watching you, because you want to gain their approval, but with all your heart, do what God wants, and as a slave of Christ, do your work as a slave cheerfully, as though you serve, you, 
you served the Lord and not merely human being. Remember that the Lord will reward you, each of us, whether slaves or free, for the good work they do. Amen. Thank you, Mangi. So, Paul is writing here in terms of, you know, uh, the slaves and masters, that whole aspect was there uh, in the olden times. But now when you look at it, uh, you've got managers, you've got employees, you've got you know, the whole hierarchy, presidents, CEOs, and all of that. Oh, but gracias. important thing to remember is there are some key instructions that God is giving us. We know the following. Obey, be sincere, wholeheartedly or willingly, and cheerfully. So God is instructing us in the workplace to be obedient, to be sincere, to work wholeheartedly, and to, uh, to be cheerful. Stay aligned to what God has been asked of us. Be sincere. Uh, the word sincere means to be genuine. Right? Sometimes uh, we can do a lot of work, but we may not be genuine in what we are doing. Right? So, for example, in the ministry, uh, let, let me, you know, I, here and there I'll use examples of the workplace and examples of ministry, but they're applicable for both. Uh, the reason I'm applying examples in the workplace also is, also is because I don't want us to think that, okay, this is only for ministry. Right? Uh, it, it is also for us in the corporate sector. Right, uh, being sincere, even when nobody is watching, uh, to have a genuine interest in things uh, that you're doing in the work that we are doing. Right, so there will be times in ministry. Uh, maybe you know, for example, the church is doing a conference. The pastor says, "Okay, uh, you have to you know uh, make sure that the chairs are arranged, and uh, you know the." Uh, administration you have to look after administration so the food has been uh, you know uh, contact the vendors uh, and also make sure that everything is uh, clean in the church uh, that people are following timing it's a three day conference so the pastors are busy the leaders are busy so the work has been entrusted to you now if we work only for people to see us and appreciate us there's no honor in that. Uh, when we work, we are to work with sincerity and genuine interest. Right? Whether it be cleaning the chairs, whether it be uh, you know, uh, setting up the church, setting up the speakers, whether it would be a menial task of you know, just serving food, we are to do it with genuine interest and sincerity. I love what uh, in the book of Acts, uh, you know, that problem happened where they were, uh, you know, the, the, the widows felt neglected. And the Bible says that they searched for, pe for people who are full of wisdom. To do the work. What was the work? To serve food to widows. If you think to ourselves, you know, why, why do you need wisdom? You don't need wisdom full of grace and wisdom to serve food. Just choose like five people or ten people, come, you know, give them the work you assign and, you know, put the food for the widows. No, but they chose seven men full of wisdom, which means what? It was even though a menial task, but they wanted to make sure that they were sincere, genuine people serving with all their heart. Right. And so Philippians 2.14 says, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may be innocent and pure as God's children. Right. Uh, so this is something that this is a character that we develop uh, over time. Right. To be obedient, to be sincere, to be genuine. Uh, here's what I've noticed. You know, many times we join an office or join a company or join a ministry uh, initially, we are very sincere, very genuine. Right? We want to do everything. We go beyond uh, you know, uh, what was asked for. But the real test is, as time passes by, 
after two years, after three years of working in the same company, what is our attitude? Are we still aligned? Are we still sincere? Are we still genuine? Are we still giving our best for what God has uh, called us for? That is the real test, right? So this is a very important, you know, uh, aspect that God is, you know, teaching us here. Be sincere, even when nobody's watching. And uh, there are plenty of examples that I'll give. Maybe I'll go on and later on we'll give some examples. Next point. Loyalty is essential. Be faithful. Let's read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. Anyone can please read Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. Okay, let's read uh, Proverbs 3, 3 to 4. Never let go of loyalty and faithfulness. Tie them around your neck. Write them on your heart. If you do this, both God and people will be pleased with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abhina. So loyalty is very important. Faithful is being faithful, being committed to the company or the organization that you're working for is very important. Uh, now, there will be times, you know, for example, you're, uh, you're working, you've joined a new company, right? Be faithful to your uh, work that is given to you. Uh, be faithful to be loyal to your team leaders, to your managers. But there will come a time, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, you will have to change. Not saying that, you know, you have to stay, be loyal to your company means you have to be in that same company till, you know, retirement. No. For different reasons, we will change companies. We will change, uh, move out for different higher positions, or higher roles and different uh, reasons. But as long as you are in the company that you're working with, be loyal to that company. Right Now, one of the, uh, one of the, things that I hear from a lot of young people is, you know, they were, for example, they're working for a company. And after three years of working in the company, they begin to mock the company. And, uh, no, the company is like this, like that. What is that? That's being, that's not being loyal to the company. Yes, there are teams, uh, maybe there are people around who are jealous, angry, and the work environment may not be good. Uh, but God is teaching us and saying, you be loyal to what, you know, to where I have placed you at. Perfect example would be that of, you know, Nehemiah, Daniel. They are Jews. They are sitting in Babylon. They didn't, uh, you know, make plans to make uh, Jerusalem uh, uh, a better a better city. No, no. They were working in Babylon and Daniel was in charge of making things in Babylon better. So he was loyal to that nation. Was that nation a good nation towards Israel? No. But since God placed him there, he was loyal. He was faithful to the work that he had, that was given to him. Never do we see that Daniel said, okay, you know what, now I am here, uh, but I will put all my efforts in, you know, blessing the people of Israel than uh, here. No. God had placed him there. He was doing good for the benefit of that nation. Same thing with Joseph. Joseph gave us, we know the story, he came here. And what did he do? He made the nation such a powerful nation. He blessed, the, because he was the leader, the nation was blessed. He was faithful. He was diligent in everything he was doing there, right? Uh, loyalty is something that is not found easy in these days, right? Uh, but God is calling us. He's saying, be loyal to the company right? uh, or to, to the ministry that you are in. Be faithful, right? Well, the Lord Jesus narrated uh, the story of the irresponsible manager, you know, uh, he who ran his owner's business into a loss because of misleading people. And what does the owner say? Whoever is faithful in small, they will be faithful in bigger things. Now, this is a verse that we always use. Right? Be faithful in small things. God will give you bigger things. Right? And this is a one sentence that I always keep telling myself from the time uh, 
from 2010, 2011, I always tell myself, be faithful and small. Then the bigger dose will come. There, were, there are many times that, you know, as students, as Bible college students, uh, nobody really knew, uh, you know, what, what we were doing, meaning we would do the menial, the most menial tasks. Uh, but a few of us in Bible college, we would do it with all faithfulness, with all joy, knowing that, you know, we're doing it for God. We're doing it for God's kingdom and God will bless the work of our hands. Uh, that, you know, there would be so menial to the point of, you know, carrying water uh, uh, to the restrooms or cleaning up and mopping the floors. Uh, now, nobody's going to come take pictures of us, you know, sweeping and mopping the floors and say, okay, this is uh, Paul and the Bible college team who is, you know, sweeping and mopping. Nobody's going to do that. Uh, it's done in secret. Uh, but when you do it faithfully uh, and you do it knowing that you're uh, being loyal to what God has, where God has placed you, you're faithful and small, God will give us bigger things. And so, uh, let's look at a few key principles in relation to faithfulness and loyalty. Faithfulness in small matters demonstrates your ability to be faithful in bigger matters. It is very unlikely that, you know, it does happen, but it's very unlikely that God gives us something big immediately. Right? Uh, it does happen. But usually, God takes us through smaller openings. He takes us through that season of training. Right? So, for example, you know, if we want a worship leader, it's very unlikely God will take us and put us in front of 10,000 people immediately. Very unlikely. If you get opportunities like that, wonderful. But he will look at how faithful we are in the small and there are 10 people, How? what is your attitude towards the worship? Is it like, oh, only 10 people, let me just choose five songs, uh, you know, just, just sing something, uh, finish it off. Half an hour or 40 minutes, okay, just, just choose something, sing it. Is that the attitude? And if there are 500 people, song I have to do this, this. Uh, you know, this is a good song. This is, you know, these are the uh, things that we need to include in the song. Is that how we look at things? You know, even if it's a supernatural hour that we have online, what I do is if I know I'm waiting on Friday, uh, three days before I come up with the songs, I prepare myself and say, okay, five songs, four to five songs, or three days before, sit think about the songs, think about what God is put, placing in my heart, what kind of songs, is it? Is the songs more about grace, about God's goodness, about God's power? And then we begin to you know, make the set list and you, we think about the songs. So there's a lot of preparation. There. Just those songs and just come and sing. And, no, there's a lot of preparation. There's prayer, preparation involved. Now, we may think, why, you know, you've, we've done it for about 10, 15 years now. Why do you want to you know, prepare so much? Because we are being faithful in small. Whether small, whether big, be faithful. Faithfulness in handling money uh, and, and positions that have been entrusted to you. Now, we know of many, many, many people who have, were not faithful in handling money and positions given to them, and they have fallen. Right? Uh, I've heard of many, you know, senior managers who were, you know, keep their job because of mishandling of money. Many ministries who went through turmoil and it was they were, you know, dragged to court. Uh, uh, not in our nation, but uh, across nations. Uh, and they were dragged to court. Why? Because of misleading people, because of the finances were not kept in place. So being faithful in money, being faithful in the positions that God has given us is very important. So if any one of us are planning to start your own ministry, oh, we need to be extra, extra careful, right? In terms of money, in terms of the people, how we handle situations, uh, we need to be very faithful in all of that. Uh, 
three, faithfulness in what belongs to someone else will position you to have what is your own. You know, maybe some of us in our heart feel that I want to start my own business or I want to start my own ministry. But now you are working under somebody. Now, there is your, you know, place where God has put you and he's given you that position. And if we are faithful in that, what we are doing is we are aligning ourselves and saying, God, if you give me my own, whether it's ministry or a business, just like how I'm faithful working under somebody, I will continue to be faithful uh, even in my own business or ministry that you give to me. So we are aligning ourselves to what God has for us. Right? Uh, here's the point. We are to be faithful to our organization, to the people, to our leaders, and to, to the ministry, to the pastors, to people that we are working for. Be faithful, be loyal. Next I think this is a very, very, again, very important point. Be accountable at all times. Sometimes, you know, our bosses or our leaders will, will be busy, right? So they may not ask us for the reports and all of it. Uh, be accountable at all times. Even when not asked for, right? Send reports. Now, uh, one of the things that we do in you know, APC is all of us uh, as staff, we send reports. Right? We send weekly reports, we send monthly reports, uh, and not every time it's asked for, but we just send it. Right? Okay, so these are the events that we did from January 2021 to July, to, uh, June 2021. That's a six month report. Or there are times we can, uh, you know, we send a three-month report or a monthly report. Now, these reports vary. Some talk about finances. Some talk about events. Some talk about, you know, uh, uh, spiritual progress uh, of how the church is going and functioning. And some talk about our personal progress uh, uh, in, in the ministry. So be accountable at all times. Let's read this uh, big passage here from Luke Luke chapter 12, 42 to 48. Yes, could any one of us? Sorry, Luke 12, 42 to 48. Luke 12, 42 to 48. I can read. The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise servant? He is the one that his master will put in charge to run the household and give the other servants their share of food at the proper time. How happy that servant is if his master finds him doing this when he comes home. Indeed, I tell you, the master will put that servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself that his master is taking a long time to come back and if he begins to beat the other servants, both the men and the women, and eats and drinks and gets drunk, then the master will come back one day when the servant does not expect him and at a time he does not know. The master will cut him in pieces and make him share the fate of the disobedient. The servant who knows what his master wants him to do but does not get himself ready and do it will be punished with a heavy whipping. But the servant who does not know what his master wants and yet does something for which he deserves a whipping will be punished with a light whipping. Much is required from the person to whom much is given. Much more is required from the person to whom much more is given. Amen. I like that verse. Much is required from the person to whom much is given. Much more is required to the person whom much more is given. You know, an organization or a ministry that we work for provides us with time, with tools, with training, equipment, money, infrastructure. And it is our responsibility to take and use these facilities that the, the organization is providing and do the work that God, uh, uh, that, that has been assigned to us. Right? Now, there are many companies that have 
uh, one week uh, timeline. Some have two weeks. Some have monthly reports, meaning in a month they need to finish their targets, or some have weekly targets. And so, accountability is using the resources that the organization and the company is giving us to accomplish whatever they've been asked us asking us to do uh, the goal that has been assigned to us now when we use that in an effective manner right that is when we're saying we're being accountable right being accountable is uh, firstly to your you know to your leaders to your superiors but then most importantly being accountable to god and I believe that when we are accountable to God, all the things fall in place. Because we are saying, God, uh, if this something is wrong, we're saying, God, uh, you know, this is wrong. I should not do this. So you know that you're accountable to God. And so when we're accountable to God, whatever we do, you know, will be in line and we will not fall into any problem. And I'm reminded of this uh, thing that happened uh, when. You know, at a young age, I joined a, a call center and, uh, you know, so we were working in the call center and call centers are really, I, I think some of us may know, it, it's like a nine hour shift, eight hours of talking to us, right? continuously eight hours. So you have a 15 minute break, 15 minute break and a half an hour lunch break, right? So nine hour shift, eight hours of talking to uh, customers, and it's not easy. And you got calls after calls after calls. Some are, some customers are angry, some customers are sad, and sometimes they are upset that we have called them. They may be at work in meetings, and then we ask them for their personal information. They get even more upset, and so there are different kinds of uh, you know days that we uh, face. And call centers can be very, very strenuous. But, uh, I remember uh, me and my friend, uh, uh, a friend of mine in the workplace, he was an excellent communicator, right? He he would really communicate with the uh, Samuel AOL call center. Not so good old, good of days, yes, yes. Uh, uh, and so he would really communicate very well. Right, he he had the knack of speaking to people, but here's the thing, he was not diligent, right? So I used to keep telling him, you know, you're very good at your calls. Why don't you teach me how? To... He, and he said, hey, just talk, just talk freely. Don't worry about it being recorded. So he used to give me some tips, and then he would, you know, he would uh, do very well, but he was not diligent. Right? He would he would come, he would place the customers on hold. For you know, 15, 20 minutes, he'll go out, he'll have a juice, he'll have snacks, he'll come back. So I would tell him, hey, don't do that because you know, you're being monitored. You can't put a customer on hold for 10 minutes, go have juice, and it's not right. But he say, no, nothing will happen. Don't worry. Uh, I'm a performer here uh, and all of that. And he kept doing it month after month and to many customers. And so since he was a good performer, nobody really you know, looked at what he's doing. But eventually, uh, about four months down the line, there were some kind of di discrepancies. They checked the overall hold time for um, the team. It was way above what it should be. And so the team leader went into details. He saw, OK, in our team, how many people are placing their customers on hold? And so he pulled up our list. And when he pulled up the list, he saw that the best performer in the team uh, who got the team, who gets the team to a good place, uh, who, who gets the sales done. Uh, he is the one who's been placing customers on hold for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And eventually he was called and eventually he was terminated for this act because he was not faithful. Being accountable is to use what God has given us in a right way uh, that is you know, uh, pleasing to God. And so being accountable to God will make put everything in place. Right? Now, it looks like a small thing. You know, this guy, the person that I, this friend of mine, 
it's a wonderful you know he he's the guy who would get the sales in the teams always every month he's a performer of the team right even though he places people on call for 15 20 minutes he would get the most number of sales he was so uh, you know uh, talented i believe that if he had just continued on he would have got promotions and you know gone up the ladder very fast but he was so disappointed and he looked back and he said i wish i didn't do that i wish i didn't take advantage of my skills and abilities so it's good that skills talents but it is also right usage of that being accountable of those gifts and talents right uh next point be passionate if your heart is not in it get in or get out let's read proverbs 11:8 Proverbs eleven eight yes. Yes, anyone uh, can read Proverbs eleven eight. Proverbs eleven eighteen. But no. Uh, uh, Proverbs eleven eight. Eight. Okay, I don't have it. There. I don't have it on me. Sorry, but. Proverbs eleven eight. bad work gets paid with a bad check good work gets solid pay right now when we look at a job as a job and if there is lack of passion in it it's very easy to find that out that is not very difficult right when we're passionate about something we are willing to go the extra mile but when we're not passionate about it it just becomes okay a routine that we have to do then uh then we have to get in or get out in the sense we either have to be passionate about it or move on move on and do something that you are passionate about because if we are heart half hearted about doing something um uh, whether ministry or in the workplace uh you know we just need we will not be fruitful I, uh, i remember when i was working in the it company i so much wanted to join the bible college and you know do something in ministry and uh, i would go with a half hearted heart to office i mean the office was you know just a few minutes away uh no uh, it was probably about 5 10 5 minutes away and not really I had to travel much but i would go with a half and it was a day job it was not even a night job everything was convenient but i'd go the half heart you know oh, i wish i didn't have to go i wish i can do something in the ministry and and later on i realized that hey this is wrong because what i'm doing is i'm just trying to, i'm just waiting for the day to get done and just go back home uh and you know days are going months are going and i remember talking to my parents and saying i don't want to do this uh i mean you know i'm not even passionate about this i, do, I don't want to enjoy this um uh, i want to join the ministry i want to do something i want to study the word and uh, parents are gracious enough to say okay leave the job join a bible college and um so because but i had to make that decision because my heart was not in it but the moment i joined the bible college i put 100 and was, 110% to bible college where well, did everything whatever was given whatever task whatever responsibility whatever subject uh just sit study learn did my best gave my 100% and and that's what i you know we all should do uh, if you feel that you know this is something that is not interesting you're not your heart is not in it plan and move now i want to be careful because uh, 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 you know there are times when we say okay i'm not interested and just quit a job and go on I remember the point we said that birds uh sometimes they don't if you don't settle down they keep flying all over the place right so it's also important to plan now okay so when uh, you know when I spoke to my parents they said okay you can quit and go then I I didn't quit immediately I knew that I need to you know bible college is not not I, I need to pay your fees I need to get books I need to get material and i'm not going to be working for about 2 years so i want to be self sufficient i want to have some funds with me to help me and so i saved up i didn't quit immediately i worked for about 
save up some money uh, and then plan accordingly. So even if you feel that you want to make a transition, plan accordingly. Uh, don't, don't be in a hurry to make decisions, right? Next point, maintain integrity and truthfulness always in all things. Now, just go a little quick, right? I uh, want to finish up these points. Uh, maintain in integrity. Proverbs 10, 9. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. The word integrity means to stand right, stand with your head held high, right? where you know that, hey, I've not done anything displeasing or evil in the eyes of God or evil in the eyes of people. I've done my work. I've done my ministry. I've done everything that I have with integrity. The wonderful, most wonderful example would be of Apostle Paul. He's writing his last letter to Timothy. In 2 Timothy, he says, Paul, uh, Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. What integrity. He's saying, I fought the good fight. I didn't just fight a fight. I fought the good fight in integrity. Every area of my life in the ministry, I've done it with integrity. And here, what is integrity? It's morally, ethically, and legally. Now, I'm sure you've heard about this ministry, uh, Mars Hill Church. Uh, Mark Driscoll, he's a wonderful, wonderful man of God. Um, uh, many years ago, uh, the early 90s, uh, he, he's still around, but in the early 90s, God really used him powerfully. And um, after he, you know, he uh, started his ministry, thousands of people started coming in and then new locations were planted. His ministry began to grow really, really big. At one point, he had about 15,000 people in his church. Here's what happened. Mark Driscoll, Pastor Mark Driscoll, he was known for his way of, you know, angrily speaking. He would he would mock other people. He would, uh, you know, uh, you know, shout at people on the pulpit, and uh, you know, uh, it was not going too well. That was not the way to uh, handle yourself. But uh, and then the integrity issues came up, issues with, uh, you know, uh, uh, marriage. And then all kinds of things, and the entire ministry collapsed. Fifteen thousand odd people just to nothing. So uh, I would always say this: our skills and talents take us up the ladder, but it is character and integrity that keeps us there. And we can rise up the ladder with our skills, talents. Oh, I know how to use this. I know how to do that. We go up the ladder. But once you're up the ladder, to stay there, we need integrity and good character. If not, we couldn't just fall off that ladder. What is, what is it being right morally? Are we doing the right things? Ethically and legally, do the right things. Put away, I'll just read a few verses here from Proverbs. Uh, it's got plenty of verses on maintaining integrity and truthfulness. 424, Proverbs 424. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Proverbs 1222, lying lips are an, an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. Proverbs 115. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way right, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. So in our workplace, maintain integrity, maintain truthfulness, right? where we can say, God, I've done this with integrity, I've done this assignment given to me with integrity, with truthfulness. And I know that when we do it that way, you will bless the work of our hands. You will lift us. Next point, work hard because there is no place for laziness. Right? Work hard. Now, the Bible has plenty of 
talks about work and how we are called to work hard. Uh, you look at the ant, you sluggard, how they work hard, right? That verse in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 12, 27, if you are lazy, you'll never get what you are after. But if you work hard, you will get, uh, you will get a fortune, right? Now, diligence is thoroughness, working carefully and attentiveness. When we work hard, when we are not lazy, that is when we will achieve what God wants us to achieve. It's really important. Laziness procrastinates. Uh, when we are lazy, we'll say, okay, I'll do this tomorrow. No, I'll do this day after tomorrow. Let me do it next week. Let me do it next month. Right? Why is that? It can be done today itself. But sometimes you say, okay, let me do it tomorrow. Procrastination is laziness. Uh, laziness is also doing a job incomplete or half done. Right? Uh, you know, on Sundays, we... Uh, we after church we you know clean up the whole church and sweep and mop the whole place and we we, we have a team and I always tell them let's do it neatly if we're doing it we'll do it neatly right? because it's church right uh, and so they all you know they do give their best uh, uh, we'll give you this other example there's this elderly woman uh, she's got a daughter. Uh, and the daughter is an MBA, right? She's an MBA. She's a, a, a she's do, done her masters, and uh, she completed a couple of years ago. But from then on, she's been applying for job after job after job, but she's not getting any job, right? Uh, and then she would always tell me, you know, her mother also would say. She's been applying for jobs. You know, she's not getting jobs. Then one day, uh, I really asked her, what happened? Why is it that you're not getting jobs? I'm sure there are jobs. Uh, and then I got to know, and the mother told that, she applies for jobs, and they give her the interview date. She'll say, I'm not comfortable on this date. I, uh, I, I can't go so far. This company is too far. Or, you know, the salary is too little. They don't have benefits. They don't have this. So the whole thing was for two years, she was getting many offers. But she kept procrastinating and procrastinating, saying, okay, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. And now it's very difficult for her to get a job because there's almost a three or a four year break between her studies. And for about four years now, she's at home. Still applying for job, still applying even for Marriage proposals, laziness, procrastinates. We will end up, uh, you know, uh, if we are lazy, we will end up with nothing, right? So as we apply, as we do things, let us avoid laziness. Don't just be busy, be productive, right? Uh, you know, don't just do many things. But be productive in what you're doing, right? Uh, what we do at work is important to God as much as what we do in the church, right? It's not like, okay, we are working in the church, God will bless us more. And uh, because I'm working in the corporate sector, God will look at us secondary. No, no, no. God is with us both in the church and in the workplace. He's interested in the ministry. He's interested even at your work, right? So uh, just because... You know, um, we are busy does not mean we are productive. So we need to see, are we setting goals? Are we achieving those goals? Uh, you know, are we giving results? You know, like, like you know, most companies say, most bosses, you know, you can be a very good person, uh, you know, working hard, but it is the numbers that count. It is the results that matter, right? 
you can't tell your boss you know what uh, i i did my best and then you know uh, you know me i'm a good person i you know i follow all the rules i never cheated and you can explain all of that but at the end numbers or results is what people will look at right so psalms 13 they are like trees that grow beside a stream and bear fruit at the right time next point what you do with your time is very important learn how to manage time all of us have 24 hours all of us have to use that 24 hours to do what what we are doing whether in the corporate whether in ministry learn how to use time effectively there will be uh, projects that can be put you know done secondly see what is important do what is important first right and as you're doing that have a passion for excellence uh, keep you know striving for excellence now excellence does not just come uh, excellence is hard to have the endurance to push for it right uh, don't have that you know uh, it's this much is enough attitude right now for example you know you want to uh, be a preacher or a worship leader right uh you learn the instrument you learn how to sing and then you practice practice and then eventually you audition you get into the worship team now it's not like okay target achieved i got into the worship team no it should be in a sense that we are to grow more and more and more it's not like okay i'll study the word once i become a pastor target achieved no to become a pastor we need to grow even more you need to spend more time in the word keep learning keep getting our knowledge keep studying right uh, a good student is a continual learner right he will keep learning right we are all students just because we are teaching does not mean that you know we are not learning we are all learning so never stop learning proverbs 15 sorry proverbs 15 a wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel right how do we learn can we uh, you know nowadays we have google you have youtube you have uh, apps you have uh, you know different ways of acquiring new skills listen to people uh, talk to people who are growing in that field uh, grow your knowledge watch people ask a lot of questions ask genuine questions experiment now uh, learn from people people's success learn from people's failures and the more we do all this right watching others observing we will learn uh, we will never stop learning and learning is something that will happen till the end of our life right? whether it is ministry whether it is you know uh, uh, anything in life we will learn right uh, the other couple of months back we have an older couple who are one 90 years old uh, she is 90 and she and his wife is 85 the other couple of months back when i went i was teaching them how to use um, you know uh, zoom because they wanted to join the zoom uh, prayers that we have uh, in the church so they were so interested to learn that he's 90 years old right and i was teaching them how you can log in on your phone uh then i was also teaching them about google classroom because you know they were interested in the bible college to join a few courses 90 years old never stop learning and it keeps growing it keeps growing and so uh stay focused stay calm even when unexpected thing happens uh you know in the workplace in ministry when everything's going smooth it's all right suddenly there's something unexpected that can happen that can you know really bring us down uh we have to stay focused we have to stay calm maintain the ability of a calm spirit a calm mind and uh, continue to focus on what god has uh you know set for you and uh, and so with this we complete the chapter uh, right workplace attitudes uh and we will stop here uh, and then from next week we will pick up from section 2 uh Uh, chapter 4 talking about vision and corporate vision and how to work towards that right any questions any thoughts uh, 
checked out, we can close in prayer. Everybody okay? No questions? All right. Okay. Uh, could one of us please close us in prayer? Okay, Shri Kumar, uh, raise your hand. It's already nine fifty. Uh, okay, okay. No uh, can we can we do this uh, next next? Yes, class? yes, yes, pass. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Shri Kumar. All right, uh, Mangi, can you close us in prayer, please? Uh, thank you. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for the learning we just had, Lord. We we pray, Father, that ooh, moving forward, Lord, we'll be diligent and we'll be faithful in whatever you have given us, Lord. May it be our families, may it be our health, may it be our workplace, Lord. We pray, Father, that we, we'll do everything, Lord, with the heart of glorifying you, with We'll bear in mind that everything we do, Jesus, we, we give glory to you. We pray, Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will empower us and he will teach us even further so that everything we do, Jesus, is according to your will and gives glory to you. We pray all this, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mangi. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Monday. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.